All right, so I got up in the middle of the night. I don't know why it's showing that this car is almost full. Uh, and it's really windy out. You can't really see much. The dust is still blowing like crazy, but the Aurora map is showing that it's right above us. That cave thing is over here. I'm gonna try to shoot that. And if it's you know too windy and too dusty, then I'll just call it, call it a night. Head back to the hotel. We'll see what we get. The Yoda Cave is nestled in a tall mountain, which stands at 725 feet or 221 meters tall. The mountain, which is more of a cape, stands out in the black sand plains of Maya Sandor because of its lush vegetation. This cave was featured in the movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story in the filming's opening scene. You might recognize the area as Jin Esso's hiding spot on the planet Lachmu. So hopefully, I don't think I'll see Aurora, but there's a chance that we might get a shot of some cool, uh, cool stars, at least from in the cave. That's what I'm gonna go for. Put this bad boy on a self timer. Just go from there. You have to actually like pay to play. It's like I think ten dollars. Ten bucks, something like that. So that's the big old rock you saw earlier. Some hands on credit shit. It's like, please watch for falling rocks. As windy as it is, wouldn't surprise me. out of the damn wind. That's pretty cool. What the fuck? Water or lava? What this is oozing through. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up over here. Take a look at that black stuff in a minute. It's out of the wind, so this ain't bad. Yeah, I'll get a couple uh, shots right here. spot to camp out. A fucking blizzard or some shit. Alright. You probably can't see much just because it's so fucking dark. But uh pretty nifty. here to film my butt. reminds me of the Norseman. That one scene, he's out 
See that? Yikes. Not a fire cave, but it'll do. So I just wanted to say, FJB, across the world. I'm saying I have six minutes of film time. That's not really counting down. You're weird.
So thankfully, the only real casualty was my cell phone. White walkers are real. K-I-A. Great. Yeah, I think you navigate with that. Is there a Porsche with his blinker on it? He's in the right lane. Tell me you're a tourist without telling me you're not a tourist. and welcome to Iceland coming to you from the capital actually not the capital coming to you from the REK airport which is the main international airport um, so introduction to Iceland so I was originally going to go on a vacation this year uh, to Europe but that ended up getting canceled so at the last minute I was able to book a flight to or a trip to Iceland I did it through an app and that app booked me for several flights, connecting flights coming here, and then two flights going back. Well, the funny thing is, is that one of the planes had a maintenance issue right off the bat trying to leave Houston, and it's not on time. So then I missed my international flight, which cost me money. Then I had to stay overnight at a hotel. Long story short, it has been an eventful but successful trip. So right off the bat, there was the issue with the plane. The rental car wasn't any problems. Iceland. And uh, when I arrived in Iceland, uh, I was kind of lost. Customs was a pain to get through. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. Uh, I booked a hotel without much issue. But when I finally was able to get the get some sleep, because I was jet lagged like crazy, um, you lose six hours when you fly to the middle of the Atlantic to the beautiful nation of Iceland. Um, I was able to get in the hotel, and then it was fine. It wasn't bad from there. So... I got to got a rental car, a cool car called like I think it's called DACA. It's a four x four, basically diesel equivalent of a Subaru that has a stick shift. Everything here seems to be standard. Um, 
then I was able to go to the destinations that I wanted to shoot, mostly the southern coast. And I'm going to go over each individual location that I did. I was able to get amazing footage. I was able to see anything from glaciers to a blizzard to the black um, volcanic, super fine. Some of the finest coarse sand I've ever seen while a blizzard was going on. Got amazing drone footage, amazing um, shots of glaciers, amazing shots of uh, fjords and rivers. Uh, just it was, it was a successful trip. Absolutely worth it. And I'll go over that here in just a little while. Um, but nonetheless, Iceland is very different when it comes to the United States. Um, the people are very friendly. Um, I never know what they're saying because their language is just different than anything I've ever heard. Not that I've traveled that much. Uh, but what is neat is that I've noticed that uh, you can basically rent any vehicle you want or own any vehicle you want here, unlike the United States. Uh, I've seen anywhere from Ford to Dodge, uh, Jeep, uh, all makes and models. Really cool. The food here is definitely interesting, too. <laughs> Most of the course foods that they, they'll actually serve, it's just, I'd say fast food, but it, it's a lot healthier than typically what is in the U.S., uh, from what I can tell, and just from eating it and the feeling. So the only thing that I saw that was really served was lamb, at least in the southern coast where I was at, uh, lamb, hamburgers, hot dogs, and for some reason KFC is a big thing here. I haven't seen any McDonald's or Burger Kings. Not that they're not in the capital. I didn't spend much time there. I was mostly on the south coast this trip. Um, and, yeah, the food's just different. So the vehicles, the people, the food, it's, it's an absolute must. You have to visit Iceland if you have not. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I ran into a few issues while I was there. Like I said, I was out shooting and get caught in a blizzard. Um, some of the best shooting that I've ever had. My phone decided to get KIA when I was shooting some of it. It's stuck on a yellow screen. I don't really know what that means, but uh, we'll find out because I can't put it on airplane mode. So I basically just have to hope it's going to die before I go back. But um, Iceland is a must. And driving around, you're going to want, if you're, when, if and when you do come to Iceland, a cell phone will be sufficient if you do a lot of the tourist type uh, shoots. If you're going to come here as a semi professional amateur or hobbyist, as a photographer, you're going to want a wide variety of lenses, probably the Holy Trinity, as they call it. Um, I have the, I believe this is the 14 millimeter, the G. 14 millimeter, um, 1.8, sorry, uh, GM, FE. Uh, this is for my wide angle. And then I have the uh, Sony G. Um, it's the five point, FE 5.6, 6.3 by 600 G OSS. And I was driving and like just the timing and the lighting, things just line up. And I'm changing lenses. I only brought one camera. Uh, body, which I'm filming on. It's the Alpha One. Um, but I was having to change between the, because moments are just there, just chances for you to capture that moment in time and that lighting and changing between the 24 uh, to 70 and then the long lens uh, constantly for different types of, uh, different types of shots. And you'll see those later on. But um, it's, it's absolutely advantageous if you're going to bring that to bring those to your kit. If you had to bring because the Northern Lights are here as well. And I'll say about the land of fire and ice is there was earthquakes while I was here. Unfortunately, the town of Gerjevic, I believe is how you say it. I probably slaughtered that. I'll correct it in the link here. But um, a volcano erupted near there and it burned up part of that, that fishing village, which is just tragic. So while I was here, I didn't have the opportunity to see the Blue Lagoon or um, to shoot volcanoes, but I wasn't planning on volcanoes anyways. I came here for uh, deep winter uh, photography, which I was able to achieve on the southern coast, at least this trip, and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of stressors, but that just comes with the territory. So um, if you're on the fence about coming to Iceland or not, you absolutely have to. If it's winter time, I would recommend getting in a hotel, and I will warn you this too, it is a bit pricey. When it comes to everything, uh, fuel is expensive, food is expensive, uh, alcoholic beverages are expensive. 
Um, the only thing that really wasn't very expensive was the rental car that uh, four by four I was able to rent for like 200 and something euros, but I got the full coverage, which you're going to want to do. Uh, it's a great place to test yourself, test your gear and test your metal. 